Hello guys, um, this is going to be a slight different video. This is a video showing you how I reball ICs. Um, I have had a, I've had a few people ask me what products I use, um, where to start, how to use them. So I thought yeah, I'd just make a video on it. So the first thing you can see here is all I need to reball pretty much any any chip you want. Apart from you could buy a custom stencil. So whatever whatever I see you want to reball. Just buy the correct stencil for it. I don't recommend you buying these really small ones with hardly any surface area. The reason being is it's hard to put solder paste on them. Like you could probably probably use balls. I personally can't do the balls method. I do have some balls anyway. Uh, sometimes I do need them if some of the solder paste doesn't stick to the board properly. But anyway, hopefully I won't, this won't happen in this video. So yeah, so let's start off with my solder paste and it's a mechanic 183 pot uh, i think it's like four pounds again i'll leave the the i'll leave the links in the description below to everything it's like really four pounds something delivered bargain this is the 60 gram one and when you first do get it it's going to be really really wet and liquidy and you don't want that you want to dry it out so the way i dry it out is I get my hot air gun, which I have a Yeehaw 853D 3-in-1. It's a very cheap one. It's the first one that I got when I started off. And it's it, it does its job. Like, I'm not going to upgrade until it fails, and it hasn't failed yet. So I have the hot air temperature at four no 160 degrees to dry this paste out. So 160 full airflow right, and I put my nozzle on and then I get a stirring tool in this case I'm using a spudger type thing and I just heat it up going round and round and round this will take a while it'll take about 10-15 minutes to dry out nicely it depends how dry you want it I like it quite dry but not to the point where it flakes everywhere. You just want it quite dry. Don't worry, it won't actually melt the solder paste, which is good. 160 degrees is too low, I think. Just keep swirling it around and you should see it start glistening. This is pretty dry anyway now, but... It will start smoking a lot, so I have a fume extractor. I do have one on the way, but it's just gonna take a while. And you just want to stir it every now and then. Just give it a nice stir. And just keep doing that for a long time. <laughs> While it is hot, it will stay liquidy. But once it cools down, that's when it really looks dry and good. It is smoking for me now. You can see it's liquefied a little bit. It's very shiny in there. And just give it a stir. To me, that's looking quite quite nice now. It looks a nice white, well, more like a light gray. And it's quite th thick now. It's not as runny as when it, when it first was. And I think that's good enough. So once that cools down, that will be nice and dry, hopefully. It will be. So if I just put that aside, wait for that to dr uh, cool down. And it should start going a bit, bit drier after it's cooled down a bit solidifies so yeah so this kit here is a switch APU kit and this one is really good because you could use this kit here to reboot any other stent uh, any other IC and it comes with this bracket this stencil for the APU and this spatula type thing to spread the thermal paste which is quite nice so that just basically goes together like that. So you put the the stencil on there, put it onto your magnetic base, very good magnetic base, very strong, and you slide it on. And it does come with this. Now I recommend getting this orange silicone mat, which is, is this great for any other chip that you wanna reball because obviously you can't buy these brackets for every single chip that you wanna reball. So if you get this orange mat, you basically essentially put it on top of that big magnetic base get your IC put it on there 
get your stencil that you want to reball with and it literally is so strong and that is just amazing so 100% get a silicone orange mat and also I recommend getting this Emeo board holder or chip holder as you call it it's quite nice it does separate why I don't know but it does I guess you could clean underneath it and stuff which is very nice to, to do that to hold that now the solder wick I use is mechanic rosin 1.5 millimeter it does have like some sort of white powder in it to help it absorb the solder so I recommend getting that 1.5 mils really good and also mechanic leaded solder it's okay no, I wouldn't recommend it but whatever solder you prefer just use that as long as it's leaded to keep that lower melting point down and also the other soldering iron that I use which I mostly use for I wouldn't say reballing smaller ICs is the Quico T12951 with the BC1 solder tip I love it it's got like a, a slit in it like a diagonal cut so it's nice to really get the angles that you need uh, I'll leave a picture here of the solder station I usually have this set to 360 degrees unless I work with ribbon cables and stuff I let it down to about 340 but 360 degrees Celsius is pretty much where I, I always leave it at so the first step I guess is um, pulling an IC off and I'll show you the steps that I use to prep it and everything okay so I've got a switch Wi-Fi IC it's a very small one so I'm gonna show you what I do to prepare it to reball it I get my board holder or chip holder I don't know why I keep calling it a board holder it doesn't really hold boards it's more for chips place that in there clamp it down and then I add I use Kingbow Flux again Flux is your personal preference I'm not keen on this I prefer Amtec but this was really cheap and just put a bit of flux down get your soldering iron again I have it at 360 degrees clean the tip get your leaded solder and tin your tip and just gently go over the IC do it in little mini circles if I show you under the microscope what I'm doing so this is exactly what I'm doing just gently rubbing over your IC with some leaded solder it lowers the melting point once you've done that you clean your tip grab your solder wick again I'm using the mechanic rosin desoldering wire I turn this sideways so it's easier for me and if you put that on there and the solder tip on there gently slide it across very very lightly you want to do this very lightly because this coating on this IC is known to scratch and there you go that is prepared enough there might be some little bits of solder left behind but that is okay bit of isopropyl alcohol give it a clean I can still see there's a couple of bits of solder on there or is that okay run it with your finger and if you could feel any notches now that feels okay there might be a bit of solder left on there yeah I am gonna get rid of them solder bits there it's just a little bit of flux come in with the solder wick again and I'm just going to dab it just a little tap wait 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 and bring it off and it should absorb it I think that's probably good yeah I think that's good enough again clean it with your isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush yeah that looks a lot better and then you open it up slide the IC off make sure you clean this afterwards with isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush because it does get very sticky and cloggy cool so once that's now done 
we could be finished with this now. Now I want to get the switch magnetic base here with my orange silicone mat. Just place it in the middle there. Get your IC and place it in the middle. Then grab your stencil. This is my universal stencil. Again, it's Ameo. Ameo is pretty good. Again. Now what I do is I use my microscope and I use it dead like pointing straight down so the light could go through the holes and I use that to basically guide the stencil correctly above the IC. You, you'll see it like you'll see this weird like light and you could line it up with the chip below. It's hard for me to show you that. So I'm just going to go under the microscope. Make sure your microscope's pointing dead down for better line up. It's hard to see at the minute, but if I put my stencil down and then I could slowly fold it over the IC, I can see it's not lined up correctly. So I slowly move it down. That looks like it's lining up nicely, but in reality, it's not. If you look at the microscope now, it's not lined up. So I think it needs pushing up a little bit more. No, it needs to go down and left. Almost there. There we go. I think that's it. Just needs slight manipulation. Okay, I think that's good. There's either dirt in my stencil, so make sure you clean your stencil first, or the pads are oxidized. You don't really want to see black bits. If I lift my stencil up and have a look. Yeah, it looks like the pads are oxidized in there. Just make sure you scrape it or something. Give it a gentle light scrape in. Even though I didn't sol clean the solder off properly. So make sure you do a better job than I'm doing. I'm just doing it for video purposes. Now I'm completely off. Try and slide that stencil down again. Trying to line it up. Yep. That would do for this video. Hopefully the solder paste will go in there. I would recommend cleaning the IC properly first kind of a bad example what I'm doing here but it'll be okay in this instance I'm not it will still work it will still work hopefully <laughs> so you just want to get on your spatula a little bit of your dried out paste and scrape it on there scrape it on there like that just a few times and then turn your spatula around and scoop it back up And do it one more time just to make sure. Scrape, scrape, scrape. Turn it around and scoop it back up. We go under the microscope and have a look on how much of a job it's done. Yep, you can see all the holes are filled in and it looks pretty even. Awesome. So I have my nozzle on. With small ICs, I have my nozzle on my hot air station. I always set it to 440 degrees Celsius. And always max airflow, which mine is eight out of eight. And you just wanna keep rotating the heat. Just, just take your time, don't rush it. Just keep rotating the heat. You don't want the stencil to flex because the heat's concentrated in one area. So if you can see now, I'm just constantly running it round and round and round. It's very windy today, so my microscope's moving everywhere. Take your time. The drier your paste is, the quicker it will liquefy. And you can see it's slowly turning now. And there we go. If we wait a couple more seconds just to make sure it's all liquefied and absorbed onto the chip or soldered onto the chip and that will do lovely now you don't want to wait too long otherwise the IC will stick to the stencil so wait about 10 to 15 seconds and what I do now is I put my finger on one side of the stencil and bend the other side just like that and it comes off lovely we look under the microscope to see if we're missing any balls, which hopefully we shouldn't. 
No, it looks like all the balls are in on the board. So we do want to reflow it. So a tiny bit of flux. Same airflow, same temperature. You can lower the temperature down if you want, but I, I just like 440 degrees on everything. And I'm coming in with the hot air, spinning it around to make sure it's all been reflowed. Do that for about 10 seconds. Lovely, I think that's done. And now you wait for it to cool down before you go in with the cleaning process. That should be cooled down enough. Add a bit of isopropyl. Clean your IC. And you can see that's a beautifully reboiled chip. It may be stuck on the silicone mat a little bit, so you might want to nudge it away. Perfect. So that is a perfectly reboiled chip. And that's what I do for these smaller ICs. Make sure you clean your equipment as you go. But yeah, highly recommend this, the kit for the APU for the switch and any stencils you want. That's all you need. Oh, and the solder paste, 100% the mechanic solder paste. Good stuff. But with the APU for switches, um, it's a very similar process, but the only thing I do differently is I have my nozzle off of my uh, hot air gun. I take the nozzle off, same temperatures, same air speed, but say, right, say you've just pasted your APU on there. And what I do with the, oh, that's really hot still. <laughs> what I do is, constantly circling like that pretty fast it takes a while but be patient you don't want to concentrate on one area in the middle one area in the middle sorry because the stencil will pop and flex and you're just going to get solder going into different holes and it's just going to be a mess it's not going to work so constantly keep the whole heat around like that all the way around that speed this is what i do again you might find the easier way of doing it but 440 degrees it's constantly spinning and you'll slowly see them all starting to dry out and then go into liquefying mode or, you know, dissolve, not dissolve, what's the word? Liquefy, I guess, yeah. And then once it's done, give it about, again, 10, 15 seconds to cool down, not too long, and then slowly slide it off. And basically this stencil will lift off slightly off the APU and then I hold my finger down on that corner again lifting up in the other corner gently and slowly and then it's done so it's very similar what i've done with this one but i use the nozzle off on bigger ic's and keep moving it around just take your time so yeah so i hope this um helped you guys this is the process that i use the equipment i use i'll leave all the links in the description of all this that i've just used in this video so if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, please comment below. You could join my Discord. Again, the link will be in the description if you want to you know, message me with any questions or just to hang out with some of us. But yeah, all right. I'll see you guys in the next video.